Hello, this is uh, lesson 1A, basically on the implications of tech evolving technologies as summarized through the uh, hype cycles and other, other similar concepts which uh, try to compare and catalog uh, technologies. And um, everything we talk about in this class has been through a hype cycle from clouds to big data to the detailed machine learning. And uh, those hype there are 100 hype cycles, or over 100. And we will usually deal with the emerging technology one using uh, specialized hype cycles for particular areas. In this um, um, lesson, we first discuss general features of the hype cycles, like their phases, the concept of the priority matrix, and give an initial discussion of the 2019 hype cycle for emerging technologies with its five uh, areas of classification. Thank you. Okay, here is a little picture with um, uh, the hype cycle with the uh, things we've already introduced, the uh, different parts, the innovation trigger, peak of inflated expectations, trap of disillusionment, and the slope and slash plateau. Um, it also tries to classify the classes of technologies and where they are. Uh, digital platforms like hyperscale computing is here. We're still far from um, far from the peak of, of, of expectations. AI everywhere is at the top here. Incredibly hyped. Immersive experiences, which are a rather different style of technology, not so relevant for this particular class. They've gone through that hype and they're hopefully going to have come along the slope of enlightenment, although they haven't clearly made it in the commercial consumer market yet. Hi, folks, here is the 2019 Emergency Technology, Emerging Technologies Hype Cycle. It has around 30. Items in it called innovations, and the innovations are either on the trigger area, the inflated expectation area, the trough of disillusionment area, slope of enlightenment, or the plateau of productivity. Uh, these um, innovations are either in the first two categories, and that was presumably a deliberate choice of uh, the analysts here. It varies from year to year, they have different analysts each year. Sometimes they keep on the same task, but often they change. And these analysts are try to make a relatively fresh start. Uh, we're introducing more different innovations, and they clearly have focused at the beginning of the hype cycle um, um, process. So here we see a lot of driving ones, autonomous driving, flying vehicles, delivery drones. Here we have super high quality um, autonomous driving. We have the standard things that have around the edge analytics. AI platform as a service, biochips, 5G to enable the edge to connect to the cloud, edge AI. Here we have a um, communication technology, low Earth orbit satellite systems. Next generation memory like Intel Optane. 3D sensing cameras is one of their favorites. Um, we have many deep learning concepts, transfer learning, adversarial, generative adversarial networks, um, augmented intelligence, uh, edge AI, explainable AI, uh, AI platform as a service. Here we have um, augmented reality cloud, uh, biotech and artificial uh, tissues. That's what we <coughs> do research on locally. Uh, new organizations, entirely electronic, and um, generating data from simulations, studying knowledge graphs built by taking things as nodes and joining them when they link together, um, edge AI, and so on. So this is a pretty rich set of certainly important innovations with the, with a focus that um, these particular analysts like. Five, uh, on the 10 year out, we have uh, decentralized web, 3D printing, uh, flying autonomous vehicles, 
level five driving, actually even level four driving is more than 10 years of biotech. All right, so that's uh, not too bad. All right, so this uh, slide here actually goes through and defines these uh, five areas innovation trigger, where something happens. A professor makes a breakthrough, makes a press release, gets attention. Then a lot of things, a lot of those happen with lots of professors and lots of companies, and we get to this peak of inflated expectation. Over enthusiasm, unrealism, un un uh, slightly flaky at advertising, and as they say, the only people making money are conference organizers and magazine publishers. Aha, trough of disillusionment. So some technologies pop, reach the trough and they never are seen again. They become unfashionable. The problems with the technologies become clear. Everybody's interest wanes, and there's some, um, in a year or so, you never hear of the game. But you don't even know it went into the trough. It just disappears. Now, but some of those things whiz through the trough and get to the slope of enlightenment. That's what clouds did. That's what virtualization is doing. And uh, they go from being flaky, hype things to really pretty solid, uh, very usable things. <clears throat> and they're now entering a very so much, very solid uh, commercialization phase with lots of, um, lots of um, products coming out. And then when they get to slightly boring and everything is solid, they're on the plateau of productivity. And <coughs> uh, as it says here, about 20% of the potential customers have actually adopted it. So clouds are past 20%. Um, they're nearing actually in a two or three years, they'll be at 50%. All right, so now we uh, discuss general structure of hype cycles and priority matrices. As I mentioned, there are over 100 hype cycles, a little over 100. And that number has increased over the years. So obviously, they're very popular, and Gartner has responded by adding more and more hype cycles. Although, as I've noticed, occasionally they actually deprecate the hype cycle, so you can't actually follow trends. Every hype cycle has a priority matrix which maps a benefit from transformational high, moderate, low for benefits. To four times time spans, less than two years, two to five, five to ten, more than ten. And then this particular chart, which is sort of a general chart on priority matrices, it tells you uh, what type of investment. Then you're always going to be possible to invest in transformational technologies. Low um, benefit, you would only do it if they're really just about to pay off. High, well, as long as they're in a 10 year time frame, it looks pretty good, although it varies according to your um, tolerance for risk. And moderate is even more um, um, sensitive. And um, up, here, up here, we sort of take that nice, beautiful shape of the hype cycle and break it up into a hype, which peaks at the uh, inflated expectations and then goes to zero. And then we combine that with the engineering or productization, a smooth exponential. And joining them together, we get this favorite uh, shape here. All right, so that's uh, that. Here we actually have the priority matrix for emerging technologies in 2019. Um, Obviously, made by the same analyst as the hype cycle. It's in the same report. And we see um, uh, nothing in low, a little bit in moderate um, transfer learning and uh, flying autonomous vehicles. Um, nanoscale 3D printing is high, but more than 10 years out. All driving uh, is, far, is more than 10 years out. Um, they actually think that uh, light cargo delivery drones, which is Amazon uh, delivery by um, maybe uh, broad-based Amazon delivery by drones is uh, five to ten years out. But it's uh, going to beat cars, because cars have a much more 
risky environment to try to navigate through. If we look at, there are a lot of pretty transformational uh, innovations here, and a lot of high and very few moderate and no low. So they obviously view these as very positively, and they say I would add various other things uh, uh, to this list. Edge AI is undoubtedly critical and transformational if you get it to work right. Augmented intelligence is is obviously a very important uh, for society. The AR cloud, then we have the five to ten years. Deep learning, specialized technologies, generative adversarial networks, low auth orbit satellites, next generation memory, the least favorite of my technologies, because I don't quite see why they picked that one out. Uh, the more possible um, system hardware technologies. Um, you could argue it's going to be new chip designs equally well. And AI platform or service, whether why that's high, not transformational, or vice versa. Uh, it's not quite clear to me. I think that's a matter of judgment. Explainable AI, graph analytics, that goes hand in hand with knowledge graphs. Personification is um, the technology of identifying, uh, I mean, of recognizing people based on non sensitive data. Obviously, a useful thing to do. In this. Um, Slide, we uh, sort of look at the various parts of the height cycle and, and translate it into actions. Namely, if you are looking at uh, innovations in this area here before the middle of the trough, uh, you could ask what's useful here. When it's uh, in this area here, you better ask why aren't we using it here? Should we use it here? Why aren't we using it? Then if we look in more detail on this uh, uh, plot on the right, we see how actually a company or an organization uh, responsible for an innovation might react. Um, up here, we start getting the first non-early adopter use. We get the press, which is often negative. We get uh, various people in the field consolidating, getting out, the very early people getting out. We get the second and third round of venture capital. We get uh, second generation products, third generation products. Here, uh, 20 to 30 percent of the of the possible audience has adopted the innovation. Still, quite a lot of sales still to go. I notice here it's just five percent. So, here we have startup companies right at the beginning of the innovation trigger. We have uh, first generation products, very expensive. Early adopters start looking at them. The hype starts up here. We get more than one supplier starting up here. So that's a, a classic uh, uh, picture. Here we have a timing. Uh, for the, the, this hype, top of the hype cycle, you have to ask whether you're adopting too early. At the bottom of the trough, you ask if you're giving up too soon. In uh, the end of the slope of enlightenment, are you adopting too late? Right in the, you know, in the Deep into the plateau of productivity, are you just hanging on with yesterday's ideas? Um, if we look at the opportunities, then we start acquiring talent to, to really productize it and make the big jump at the top of this hype cycle. We position ourselves, we find out how to do things up the supplier chain. We try to move as quickly as possible right at the beginning. Up here, we're planning the next step. And hopefully, we're going to lead this giant wave going from 5% use here to 25% use here. So, uh, Gartner identifies five trends for this year, which group the innovation triggers sensing and mobility, augmented humans, um, the sort of hardware and systems. Post classical computer and communication, the digital ecosystems, and AI, which uh, you could use many words for this. They have advanced AI and analytics. I would just put down deep learning and brackets plus the rest of the stuff. All right, here we have sensing and mobility, um, which is 
We've got two concepts built in here which are related. <coughs> They're all connected with the edge. Sensors live at the edge. Mobile drones and cars and aircraft also live at the edge. They're somewhat bigger than um, tiny sensors which are detecting temperature things, but they're still edge devices. And this is all part of the Internet of Things. And as they get AI suffused into them, we're going to see drastic changes. We're going to see self-driving cars. We're going to see houses that adapt to our needs much better than they do today. Here under the, the, the second paragraph of each of these descriptions has the sub-technologies, 3D sensing cameras. Here we have the augmented reality cloud. It's not quite obvious from the name what that is. It is basically a digital twin of the world. It is a virtual world which reproduces our world. Obviously, you can then use that for an augmented reality experience. We have uh, delivery drones, flying vehicles, and autonomous driving at both levels four and five. Um, then we have augmented humans, which um, could be related to the augmented reality cloud, but they put here biochips, personification, which is the um, identification of personal of context. For, Personalized context, not based on sensitive material. We have in human intelligence augmented by machine intelligence. We have A for AI for emotion. We have virtual reality, immersive workspaces. And we have the great biochip and artificial tissue type developments. Here we have this, uh, in my opinion, weakest part of this particular report, the hardware. I do not quite, I think 5G is uncontroversial. Next generation memory is highly controversial. There are going to be many areas of um, silly, you know, classic chip infrastructure which will improve. Whether it's memory, next generation memory like Intel Optane is very important and will have a lot of impact because it will allow us actually to, to get much better, do much better data analytics because we're going to store much more data with. Uh, very low latency access, because uh, things like Optane combine the robustness of SSD and the large size of SSD with the with uh, a latency which is not so fast, not so much slower than DRAM. We have the low orbit satellite systems enabling communication, and we have nanoscale 3D printing. Remember that was on a 10-year time scale. Normally, quantum computing is in this category, and I would have included it. Still, it's still a huge investment is being made there. There will be various federal initiatives and various companies, Microsoft, IBM, Google, uh, D-Wave, they've all put a huge investments into this area. But there's still a long way from a production or even near production system. So it's certainly 10 years or out. Digital ecosystems, well, in general, a cloud is the cloud, the intelligent cloud linked to the intelligent edge. And the software and hardware that enables that is the digital ecosystem. And, um, you, and they will also link people, machines, organizations, everything will be linked. And um, it was all to do with the digitization of everything. So here we have digital operations, knowledge graphs, synthetic data, decentralized web, that's the personalized operating system that you can make the web serve your purpose, and decentralized autonomous organizations. People around the world banding together to make progress. And finally, we have the least controversial, AI. AI, however you call it, whether it's advanced or elementary or new or old, it's going to revolutionize us. And uh, it's the, obviously whatever appears in innovation has to be the most um, innovative, such advanced part of all of this. And there are all sorts of developments, I say. Most of them are associated with deep learning. And uh, they're doing everything from, from well, all these previous things. They, uh, they're enabling good decisions. They're interpreting sensor data. They're interpreting image data. They're driving cars. They're doing whatever we want them to do. Helping the police, helping the 
presidents, helping journalists, everything is going on there. And these are the technologies, which are a mix of algorithms, machine learning, software like AI platform as a service. Core, I mean, here's a very core deep learning algorithm, transfer learning and generative adversarial networks. And graphs, we pointed out that graphs were pretty important. Because whenever you study systems, where well, they give you systems of things or systems of people, or things and people, <coughs> you will always get graphs, because you'll have things, those things will be linked to other things. Those will be the links in the graph. And they will not all be linked to everybody. There'll be some, because each of those links will have a strength. And what counts as the strong links. Okay, so that's the end of this particular lesson. We go on to 1B.